three, two, one. Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Tuesday, December 7th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Rose Bowl game against Utah is in 25 days. The game against Michigan in 355 days. After we recorded Monday's show, we got our first chance to hear from Utah head coach Kyle Whittingham about that Rose Bowl matchup. He and Ryan Day took part in a teleconference about the game with reporters. And you're going to hear some of the more interesting parts of that today. This is the 16th time the Buckeyes have played in the Rose Bowl, but it's the first time that Utah has made it to Pasadena. So what does this game mean for the Utah program? Here's the answer from Utah head coach Kyle Whittingham. You know, it's just a great opportunity for our program. Uh, it's the next step in the evolution of our program, uh, getting to the Rose Bowl, because, of course, that's most years uh, what the uh, Pac-12 champion gets to experience. Um, we've been in the Pac-12 championship game three years now, and this is the first time we've ever we've been able to get over that hump and get, uh, become the champions. And uh, it's, uh, like I said, it was the next – Next step and our next goal as a program, we've, we've uh, only been at the Power 5 level 10 years now, I guess 11 years. And uh, so it's just uh, something that we've been uh, shooting for and, and uh, had our sights set on for, for a number of years. And, and uh, we finally were able to, to get over that mountain. And, and uh, we're very excited to, uh, to have that opportunity. Now, the last time Ohio State played in the Rose Bowl, Ryan Day was there obviously, but he was also about to take over the program. It's only been three years, but a lot has happened between then and now. So what does he remember about that game and that transition from head head coach Urban Meyer to head coach Ryan Day? Yeah, and that was a um, a very memorable experience in in 18. Um, You know, it was, was you know, a game versus Washington that, um, you know, was a well-fought game. And I just remember, um, you know, jumping out early and, and our guys playing strong throughout that game. And then obviously afterwards, um, you know, being in the locker room with coach and, and that ceremony meant a lot to me. And um, yeah, I think that seems like about 20 years ago, Bill. Um, and I would say that I've probably, I've probably aged a lot. A um, few gr- gray hairs popping in and but that's all part of the experience. And, um, but, but very, very memorable. I have that picture up in my office uh, back in Columbus. Some Buckeye fans might not realize this, but the Utah program has had to deal with two significant tragedies in the last year. First, running back Ty Jordan died in an accidental shooting last Christmas. And then Aaron Lowe, who was Jordan's friend and who was wearing Jordan's number 22 in his honor this fall, was killed in a shooting at a party after a game. Kyle Whittingham was asked about those two tragedies and how his team has dealt with them. Well, first of all, I couldn't be more proud of our leaders on our football team. Couldn't have got through it without those guys and the and the the ownership that they took. Um, as you mentioned, we've lost two players uh, in the last calendar year. Uh, Christmas Day, uh, almost a year ago, uh, we lost Ty Jordan. Uh, it was uh, you know the season was over with, and we weren't together as a team, so we had to do a lot of the you know the team meetings by Zoom and, and kind of get everybody uh, you know together that way. Uh, this, uh, the second player, Aaron Lowe was during the season. It was game three, game four. And, uh, we just, uh, as a football team, uh, you know, banded together. Um, and, uh, you know, we had a mantra, you know, we're going to, we're going to get through this. We'll never get over it, but we will get through it. And, uh, our guys, uh, I can't say enough for the, for our guys and, and particularly the leaders, the captains and the upperclassmen of how they kept things together and, and, uh, you know, the chemistry on this team just kept, kept getting better and better as the year went on and we became closer and closer and, and it was tough. And as a coach, you know, there is no blueprint for, for an event like that. I mean, you don't have a protocol or a way to handle that. It's, it's uh, the most difficult thing I've ever been through as a, as a football coach, hands down. And, uh, you know, for us to, to uh, get through it and, and, uh, you know, continue to, to uh, play at a high level. I mean, that was a credit to our guys. And I think maybe the biggest, uh, component to that or the biggest factor is Aaron Lowe, the, the young man who I mentioned uh, died during the season this year. His mom came and talked to the team uh, that Monday right after the, the uh, incident. It was late Saturday night. And she said that, hey, she gave our team, uh, you know, the, the blessing to, to carry on and that that's what Aaron would have wanted and that's what she wanted. And so that was a real inspiration to our team when she came and spoke to us and and they heard right from her that, uh, you know, she she and Aaron expected us to to carry on and and, uh, continue competing and fighting for a championship. 
most Ohio State fans might not know more than the names of a couple of Utah players right now. Maybe running back Tavion Thomas or quarterback Cameron Rising, and of course, cornerback Clark Phillips, who was very nearly a Buckeye a couple of years ago. But you should also know about linebacker Devin Lloyd. He wears number zero, is a Butkus Award finalist. He has more than 100 tackles this season, 22 for loss, eight sacks, and four interceptions. Yes, that is just one season of work for him. So here's Kyle Whittingham's description of what Lloyd means to that defense. Yeah, well, first of all, Devin is a special football player. He's, uh, I'm going to tell you, the best defender that's ever come through the University of Utah, at least in the modern era. You know, there may have been someone in the 30s or 40s or whatever that I don't know about. But but in the modern era, he is going to be most likely, and I think without a doubt, the highest uh, drafted defensive player that we've had. He is uh, a guy that is a self-made guy. He came to us as a safety and a wide receiver out of high school, and we projected him a linebacker, and he became, uh, you know, a self just through sheer hard work and determination, uh, you know, one of the top linebackers in the country. Uh, his versatility allows us to use him, you know, as a, in an inside backer spot, which is where he's most comfortable. We can also bring him off the edge. He's done a lot of a, of a pass rush for us in the sub packages, and so he's got a, he's a guy that uh, really can do it all. He's got the size, the strength, the speed, the agility, you know, that all the big time players have. And so he's meant the world to us. And, and uh, of course, he just won the MVP in the Pac-12 championship game a couple nights ago and very well deserving of that. While the Rose Bowl is something of a consolation prize for Ohio State this season, this is Utah's first Pac-12 championship and their first Rose Bowl bid. So after such a historic win and such a historic achievement, how many people have reached out to Whittingham to congratulate him on this incredible season for the Utes? Yeah, it's been, uh, you know, a great uh, Ute nation is, is excited. I mean, all the ex-players and coaches, I've, I've had literally over 600 texts that, uh, and I just finished today <laughs> responding to every one of them. That was no easy task, but, but uh, they're excited. Um, you know, I've been uh, splitting my time between that and recruiting. Obviously, I'm, I'm down here in Florida right now on, on a recruiting trip. But, but uh, I can tell you that there's a lot of excitement from all the uh, all the uh, you know ex players and, and coaches that have come through Utah, and and uh, you know the community, like I mentioned before, is is ecstatic. And uh, I think we'll have a very good turnout at the Rose Bowl as far as uh, Utah fans traveling to that game. Utah and Ohio State have only played once in history. That was back in 1986. But the two programs do have something in common. That is head coach Urban Meyer. And not just head coach Urban Meyer. The fact that both coaches in this Rose Bowl served as assistants under Urban Meyer at those respective schools before taking over for him as the head coaches. So here's what both of them had to say about what Meyer meant to them, starting with Ryan Day. You know, with this game, too, it just brings up some such great memories of of what uh, he's provided me and my family and the opportunity. Um, I was down there as a graduate assistant at Florida with him during his first year and then, and then came on, um, you know, in 17 uh, at Ohio State and, um, you know, never would be in this situation without him and uh, forever in debt for, for what he's done for my family and I. And, um, you know, when you just think back on those times and um, your legacy in college football, um, you know, I hope so someday that there's somebody that uh, I've done the same thing for in this profession because it's all about relationships. I would echo the same sentiment that uh, Coach Day uh, mentioned as far as uh, shaping me as a coach. Uh, I don't think I'd be where I am today if I had not had that opportunity to work for Coach Meyer for those two years. Uh, and I had the same whistle ceremony that, that Coach Day had, and that was a, that was a great experience as well. But, um, you know, it was interesting. I, I, w- I had been at Utah for – what, eight or nine years, we had a coaching change. I thought I should be the guy. Uh, didn't get it. I was very disappointed. Urban got the job. Turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me in my coaching career because I had a chance to, to spend two years with with uh, with Urban and, and just his day-to-day uh, way he ran a football program. And, and uh, you know, there was just everything was, was mapped out. There was, uh, you know, an organization – uh, is is one of his uh, strengths and and being able to see how he ran the program and and uh, be able able to absorb all that knowledge and and the way that uh, that he did things was invaluable to me and and like I said I, I found out right away uh, that I wasn't ready for the job when I thought I was but two years later uh, you know he had uh, I learned so much from him that uh, I felt very comfortable taking over and that's that's how it laid out that's when he went to Florida and I took over uh, in the 2005 season. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. It's always good to start hearing from the other team's perspective a little bit. You've heard a lot from Ryan Day this fall. You've heard a lot from the Buckeyes this fall. There's going to be a lot of interesting stories to talk about on the Utah side of this Rose Bowl as well. So uh, we'll probably do another one of these in a little bit once we have another press availability in the coming days or weeks. So hope you can look forward to that. You can also look forward to lots of coverage of the upcoming early signing day. That's coming up in just over a week now. We'll have uh, plenty of coverage of that as Ohio State heads into the home stretch of their 2022 recruiting class. Plus, lots of other stories to talk about this week as well. A lot of conversations going on around the Ohio State football, football program, around the future of the program, the present of the program, and much more. We'll probably talk a little bit about assistant coaching uh, potential moves, what, what uh, Ohio State's going to do to respond to the loss to Michigan, and a whole lot more in the coming days. So make sure you stick around for those. And uh, you can uh, check out this podcast and all of our other podcasts on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. Just search for Buckeye Scoop to find all of our shows. You can subscribe right there and also leave us a five-star rating and review, which we do appreciate. And if you prefer to watch us instead of listen to us, you can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. You can, again, subscribe right there, hit that bell. You'll get notified every time we post a new show, every time we post a new podcast, every time we do a new live stream, all that good stuff, youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.